Hey, you guys. Here we are once again. It's Wednesday, right? Yeah, it's Wednesday. <laughs> I told, I said to the guys here in the conversation down here in the chat room, I was watching that SN95. I think it's SN95 Starship from fucking SpaceX. I was watching it. It's getting ready to launch. And you guys fucked it up. Had to come in here and stream. But I don't know when it's going to launch. There's no countdown. It's just they're going through all the pre-flight shit. They're they're gonna tell you like about thirty seconds before it launches when they're. Oh, by the to, way. By the way, we're gonna it's launch going. it. We, yeah. you guys don't need it though. Was that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're making it up as they go along. Okay. <laughs> that's, no. that's his spaceship, man. He launches it when it's fucking ready. <laughs> It'll go when I tell it's it go to. When go. I Whenever it, yeah. I push the button, that's things, when it goes. Things badass, man. It's fucking. It's like you said, it's like something out of the goddamn 1950s. It fucking takes off. It can flip on its side and then come right down and land right where it, right where it started. That's what it's going to do. Because I feel like a lot of 50s movies had that. What, what was the one that I was thinking of that was on Mystery Science Theater about the guy that landed on the chicken nugget and then he shrank? I don't know. Uh, the Phantom Planet. Okay. And I think it was Phantom Planet where they had the you know the the phallic looking rocket and yeah. it goes up and then it's like whoop back and onto the planet yeah. back and onto the planet <laughs> this thing's gonna almost flip this thing's gonna flip on its side and then land right back down it's huge it's bigger than the fucking saturn rocket it's huge <laughs> i'm telling you it's fucking huge <laughs> blow my fucking mind i believe you <laughs> yeah. and the spacex is kicking fucking ass man i'm mean, super impressed they've run out of payloads they're going, don't you guys want to launch anything? Want, want to launch anything? And Anyone like, want to go into space? Yeah, Anyone. Yeah, yeah. We'll pay you to go into space. Yeah. How about that? It's cheap. It's like almost like a little bit more expensive than a damn airplane flight. One of the Starship ones is going to, you can put like 30 satellites in it and let them all go at once. Can I pay to launch someone else into space? The, one of the rockets. <laughs> One Asking of the, for a friend. One of the rockets is going to be a passenger <laughs> rocket. It carries fucking like 20, 30, 40 people or something like that. And it can be anywhere in the world like in 15 minutes. That's pretty cool. It's badass. And just land on I want to be able to pay to send someone else into space yeah. and like leave them there. <laughs> yeah. Easy to go to space now. Because I'm a now. super villain. <laughs> Easy to go to space now. That's what I want he's to gonna do. Send, he's just going to land on the moon just for shits and giggles and then come back. Like he didn't even do it. Just because I can't. He's like, yeah. and, I'm, and then I'm going to run naked across yeah. the moon. Yeah. Woo! I'm, I'm on impressed. the moon, bitches. All right. So Take a got, selfie. Let's see if everybody's here. Yeah, everybody's here. <laughs> let's see. We got Bees a, Nest uh, said they were in Florida. Where in Florida are you at? Where are you at? Probably far. I mean, Florida's big. It's cold here. It's airport. cold here today. This yeah, morning, well, we woke up and I was like, I think I woke up at 530 or 6 or something. Because, you know old people you didn't tell me but yeah. uh yeah so i woke up and i'm like wow it's cold in here and i went out for a walk at about seven and it was 41 but it felt colder than yesterday when yesterday it also said yeah. it was 41 yeah and then a couple hours later that was like at 7 a.m and then a couple hours later, like at 9 or 10 i looked at my phone and they said oh now it's 38 so now it's yeah. like getting colder as the sun came up which is weird badger says that uh elon's gonna <clears throat> fucking launch the rocket when he Gets done finishing that joint. Yeah, it's that's like, what hey, happens. Come on, yeah, it's what cool. happens we'll when you, whatever. So it happens when you give a goth kid a fucking the ability to make fucking spaceships. Yeah, fucking where's your spaceship? I thought you were yeah. gonna build one. I don't have the money. I mean, that dude had <laughs> PayPal. He can. He's got a fucking bank. You know what I mean? He can make a spaceship. He's got a fucking hot goth girlfriend and everything, man. We were need to go. We need to go hang out with him. <laughs> I'll tell maybe, him. Maybe he'll I'll give tell me him a, a few million Musk. dollars. Musk, I'm getting fucking old, dude. <laughs> I want to be the first man to go to Mars. Send me. I'll fucking sleep the whole way. I can sleep the whole way. I, I get there. Oh, I believe that. Yeah, and I don't even <laughs> care if it's a one way trip. You can come with me. He'll just stay on. Cold Mars. is cold as shit. Well, yeah, we'll be up there freezing our tits off. Yeah, there's nothing to do. Well, yeah, what the hell are we gonna do once we get up there? They're gonna send a bunch of shit first, enough to make a whole city. That's what they're going to do. Okay. And then they send the people and they assemble it. Well, yeah, because otherwise people would be up there going... Go, what to do? Yeah. It's not like it was. I'll just take a bunch remember of Remember how we used to fantasize about going to Mars back in the 50s where you go there in the ship and you're stuck? You're like, just with what you bring? Yeah. Because it costs so much to launch something? Now they'll just sit back for fucking 10 years and send fucking billions of metric tons of fucking material. And, you know, why, why bother sending people? You know what I mean? For four years, you can just send everything enough to make a whole fucking two or three battleships, and then some guy, and then then you send robots, and then the robots assemble it, and then you just send some dudes that are fucking like rent, renters. 
Yeah. Send some renters. They don't even work. Sitting up there fucking on welfare. Smoking dope on Mars. Conducting something. Sophie They're said d- we could stream the show from Mars. Stream the show from Mars. We'll yeah. be the first podcast streaming live They're just going to be up there hanging out. <laughs> They're just going to be up there hanging out in a bar. <coughs> doing business with three, three-titted fucking mutant <laughs> bitches. Three-titted like, mutant bitches. Yeah. Running from Cohagen. Remember, That's, remember, uh, remember, uh, what was the name of that? What Total Recall? Total Recall, yeah, <coughs> yeah. Total Recall. <coughs> Arnold. Shit. Nothing to do up there except fucking hang out in a bar. I could see that. Yeah. I mean, cause yeah, like I said, it's probably all I'd end up doing. Well, it's the same yeah. shit I end up doing down here, hanging yeah. out in bars and drinking and do. reading books and watching movies. Yeah. What that's what most people end up doing. What the yeah. hell else is there to do? Not much. Then they tell you that fucking alien artifacts in the mountains. Yeah, we'll go look for alien artifacts. Yeah. All right, so uh, so let's talk about the movie. Yeah. This is a documentary, so you know, no, you can't say like too much about it. What we well, okay. What my original plan was because I saw that Shutter had added a new movie, and usually I like to watch the Shutter ones and then I'll review them. So I watched it last night, and it's an okay movie, but it wasn't really a horror movie. And I was like, well, there's not really much to talk about. If you want to check it out, if you have Shutter, um, the one thing I'm going to say, it's called Zombie Child. It's French. And if you're really into French movies and like arty movies and real slow type stuff, then you should watch it. Otherwise, don't watch it because it's not a horror movie, but it's, it's like a cool concept. Like I like the concept that they're doing. They're telling the story of Clairvius Narcisse, who, if you don't know who that is, was the guy that was buried. He was He's kind of the one that um, brought the whole Haitian zombie thing, like, to the West. I, or not the West, but, like, to the United States because of Wade Davis and Serpent the Rainbow and all that kind of stuff. Um, so they, it's kind of about him, but it's also about... It has, like, a fictional element of a girl that is a relative of his... And she's at a boarding school in France, and it kind of goes back and forth between the two things. Like I said, it's it was an okay movie, but it's very, very, very arty and very, very, very I checked ponderous. Out, this is French as fuck. It was French as fuck. I Only the that. French could make a movie about a bunch of lesbian school go- girls in a boarding school, and it end up being boring. <laughs> Only the French could do that shit, man. They talked their way through the whole fucking thing. I was like. <laughs> Okay, well, when's this shit going to fucking throw down? It never did. Yeah, like I said, it's, you know, I'm, I'm not shitting on the movie, but it's, it's not a horror movie. It's it's a drama. Had me tell this story. That should be triple X. It's a drama. Yeah, that should be triple X. Had me tell the story. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> which, is a, which is a good segue into talking about the movie that we're actually into talking, which yeah. we actually saw, like, yeah. it was probably a few <laughs> days ago. Yeah, this one was a lot better. It was a this was on Hulu, it but I think better. it's on Amazon Prime as well. Yeah, this is called Skin: A History of Nudity in the Movies because, Skin. of course, when I'm I'm scrolling through the stuff on Hulu and I'm like, naked people, all right, I'm on yeah. board with that. The history of nude scenes in Hollywood movies. Going this all... was a fascinating. Yeah, it's real interesting. It goes all the way back to the to the twenties. Yeah, it goes yeah. all the way, all back, way back, back to the twenties. The the start of film, yeah. really. You know, a lot of the shit that was going on in the twenties that. Real reminiscent to what was happening in the, I wouldn't say 70s, but 80s. Because mm. 70s was a little more wild than the 80s in a lot of way. Yeah. 80s kind of toned it down. A lot of 20s movies, you could play that in the 80s. And people would still enjoy it. Yeah. But there was semi-nudity. It, it was a little more corny and stagey. And it looked like showgirls. But, you know, some people would get it, get it, get into that. You know, the, the horror of the 20s was, pretty, was better. It's pretty good. True. Bore, look, Boris Karloff Bella goes to like a black cat. I that was like 30s. 30s, yeah, true. That was <clears throat> that was still before the Hayes Code, I think, though. What? An interesting thing, yeah, because they went into that, obviously, because, you know, they went into a lot of stuff about censorship in the movies and everything, and they, you know, talked to a lady from the MPAA, and they talked about the Hayes Code. One thing that I wasn't real aware of is that even though the Hayes Code passed in where, whenever it passed, 1934, whenever it was, Um, a lot of, that doesn't necessarily mean that all the movies adhered to it and it wasn't a big, like it was, it didn't seem like it was super enforced at first. Like even after they passed it, like some movie makers were still, they just did the shit anyway. And it's, 
My favorite. Nothing much happened. My favorite old movie that was wild was Boris Karloff, Bell Lugosi, The Black Cat. It's not very long. You can probably see it for free on YouTube. Um, it's probably about an hour long, huh? Maybe, maybe about an hour. If I remember, yeah, movies were shorter back yeah. then. Yeah, and. Man, that thing's got all these, all this fucking subject matter that didn't fly later on in it. Satanism, uh, human sacrifice, betrayal, didn't they get flayed or something. Fucking yeah. I mean, they didn't um, show it, but yeah, almost showed the shadow of it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> scantily clad, hot, classy Satanist chicks. Uh, kind of like weird stealing people's daughters. Uh, van- revenge. High tech shit. Uh, it was just, it was a fucking wild flick. It was. Yeah, it was yeah. really wild for the day. It would have been really unsettling for the day. It's also kind of hinted a bit at necrophilia. Yeah. Kind of had a bluebird beard thing where guy was satanist. Guy was, he was real rich. He built a damn super futuristic mansion on top of a of a World War One battle ground. Where he on purpose sacrificed his own unit that he commanded back in the army. He sacrificed him as a human sacrifice to consecrate the ground with evil energy. Like and, you do. Yeah, and then he built his second temple on there, and then he stole. He he, he had a, a a a bunch of women that I guess he killed them in their prime, or they died. He claimed they died, but then he he had them preserved in glass caskets. And I think I, I kind of suspect he killed them when they when he got tired of them. Uh, I guess. And then he ended up with his buddy's, I guess, underage daughter. And he had her kind of enslaved. She didn't really know, though. She's kind of walked around in a stupor, I guess. Dressed Drugs. in a real low-cut, kind of 30s-looking gown. It's like, here, I'll just give you some roofies yeah. and you can walk around half and then, naked. like a whole bunch at. of ultra-wealthy, <clears throat> powerful people were coming over for these satanic rituals. I guess it was like an orgy. And it was... He's fucking praying to Satan and shit. Boris Karloff is. That's a fucking wild flick. And then, yeah, particularly yeah. for the time. Because yeah. as I said, I do feel like sometimes people think that you couldn't show any of this kind of shit. You could. You could. For In a the while. yeah, for a while you could. Yeah. And honestly, even if you see like some U.S. movies from pre Hayes Code, they're pretty. You know, you know, not compared to shit nowadays. They're not going to show fucking you know hostile or anything like that. But for the time, it's kind of shocking. Um, but the thing about it is that in Europe, I feel like they were kind of way more ahead of the curve, particularly where sex and nudity was concerned. Because I do feel like they talked a little bit about there was a movie called Ecstasy. I can't remember what year it came out, but Hedy Lamar was in it. And I think that it was shot in God the Netherlands or somewhere. And she's just like running around naked and there's, they even showed her face like having an orgasm, which is like way ahead of the curve, particularly for how long ago this movie came out. And I feel like that, even that wouldn't have flown Mm -hmm. in uh, the U.S. Because I don't know why, but there's one weird thing about American culture is that we're pretty much fine with showing violence in movies up to a point. Like if you're getting real egregious with it, like a torture porn or something like that, then you might run into problems. But anytime you're showing nudity, particularly male nudity, we seem to have a lot more problems with like showing dicks than they, than tits. I mean, tits, they'll show tits all day long. Um, They don't like to show Bush. They don't like to show penises and they don't like to show, women enjoying sex which is very like they don't like to imply like women having orgasms or anything like that it's just it's it's really touchy they showed some weird shit it seems very strange to me they showed some history some shit they talk about the the making of Caligula that had old Wes's name in it what's that Malcolm McDowell McDowell. I think was my favorite part of this he was in it he was telling a bunch of stories you had he's um, he's so he's awesome you had uh, old British dude that scares the shit out of me when I was a kid all the time Oliver Reed Oliver Reed there was I didn't know about this. But you didn't I'll, know about that wrestling scene? Fuck no, I didn't know about that shit, man. Oh, that's a famous, famous there, scene. There was some movie where Oliver Reed... It's Women in Love. Women in Love, Based okay. on the D.H. Lawrence novel. He gets naked with some other dude in this uh, mansion out in his <clears> living room with the, in front of the fireplace and the bearskin rug, and they have some Greco-Roman wrestling. And uh, all, then they, they evidently wrestle each other into a stalemate. 
But Reed just thought that that was the scene was. But then they re-edited that bitch behind his back to make it look like it was gay sex had happened. Well, no. What ended up happening? Well, what what ended up happening was that this scene, if you've seen Women in Love, which I have, um, that's because I I think I read the book as well, like many years ago. But there's this very famous scene in the movie with Oliver Reed and I can't remember the name of the other actor. Yeah, but there's he, a younger Oliver Reed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like, you know, it wasn't like, he big, wasn't like big, big, bear. big drunk. Yeah, big Oliver drunk Reed. Oliver Reed. I mean, he yeah. was probably drunk. In this, yeah, so oh, I'm sure, not going to sure. lie. But yeah, so, it's, so they're like wrestling in front of the fireplace. And the funniest thing about this was that they basically the the censors or whatever said you can't have that scene of the two guys wrestling like that it goes on too long or it's too gay but yeah. then they cut it down and when they cut it down it looked even more gay yeah, than it did it to okay. start with because no. it's like then it didn't look like they were wrestling it looked like they'd been fucking and then yeah. they were laying there going all spent yeah. and everything now oliver reed he had a bad habit for getting arrested here in the united states alan being... bates thank you that was yeah. the other actor's name yeah, he Alva Reed. He um, had a habit of getting naked and getting arrested here in the United States. He got he did, yeah. He, he got drunk, fucking took his clothes off, and was walking down. Just think that was somewhere in Hollywood, wasn't it? I can't remember, but yeah, he, somewhere in the suburbs. You know where where the fucking movie stars live. And he's cops got him. It was, no, he took his he took his clothes off at a bar, I think, and the cops got him. Like you do, <laughs> but they let him go. You know, he was fucking Oliver Reed. And then he ended Everybody's had, like, yeah, he's he does yeah. those things. And then like the very next day, I think he had to do the Merv Griffin show. And they mentioned it and shit. And he just kind of laughed it off. He's yeah. like, yeah, 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 I'm Oliver Reed. What are you going to do? You know what I mean? Yeah. He was in it was just England reinvading the United States. <laughs> like Oliver Reed. But, you know. He's it, like, it, I'm going to swing my dick all over yeah, this motherfucker. It's understandable, though, you know. fucking Hollywood was a really bad influence on any kind of foreign actor. They came here and they just, they, they, I don't think they were used to that level of fucking partying and that level of attention and that level of celebrity. Yeah, I mean, I because the British, I mean, yeah. they have the same type of celebrity culture over there, but... It's not as big. It's not as big, yeah. Not as cash-fueled and cocaine-fueled as it was back then. Yeah, it's not quite to the same yeah. and the magnitude, women. Yeah, I suppose. Well, I heard, you know, even guys like Tom Baker, you know, they'd get done shooting fucking Doctor Who and you just go to the local pub and hang out Yeah, at the local pub. You couldn't do that in the United States. No. No, couldn't go to look. Those, they, they, they can't go out in public, at least not back in those days. Nowadays, nobody gives a shit. You can be famous well, and it depends and where you live, too, because yeah. um, one of the reasons why a lot of real famous people live in New York City is because you can generally walk down the street and no one Nobody will bother, bother you. you. Yeah. And I've seen famous people just walking around in New York City as well, and just, no one bothers them. Everybody knows who they are. Like, so yeah. even, people even know where they live. Yeah. But, because they, like, just walk down and get bagels or whatever, but it's like, yeah. they just don't get bothered there because New Yorkers are just like, meh, whatever. Right now, you'd probably get robbed. <laughs> I heard I heard New York's really bad right now. Yeah, well, I don't know. I haven't been there in a long time. But yeah. um, but yeah. So oh, we you were talking about Malcolm McDowell. Yeah. He was talking about because they went a lot into Caligula, obviously, because that was kind of a big thing. And the funniest thing about that, I don't know if this is true or not. <coughs> Malcolm McDowell says he's like, well, basically everybody else was naked in Caligula, and he'd been naked in a bunch of other movies. Obviously, he was in If, he was in Clockwork Orange, and uh, he was naked in that too. Had somebody looking up his butt with a flashlight, you know. So he said, well, I feel like if I'm Caligula, that everybody else is naked and I'm not because it's like a power trip type thing. So he's like, I'm going to keep my clothes on in this because everyone else is naked. But he says, and I said, I don't know if this is true or not, but he said that he didn't know that this was going to be like a straight up porn movie because it essentially is a porn movie. Kind of, yeah. Um, He said he didn't really know that. He's like, because... (laughs) He's like, what they would do is they would they would have footage of me just like looking wistfully over there, like looking with satisfaction or smugly or over there or whatever. And then it's like, and then they'd edit it so there was like this big fucking orgy with all these naked people. Like yeah. fucking, he's like, I wasn't really looking at that, like yeah. when they shot it. But when they edited it back, he's like, so I went to go see the movie, and I'm like, what the fuck? Happened? I remember I remember seeing that movie a long time ago, <laughs> and really I didn't walk away from it thinking that it was that pornographic. It was X rated. But X-rated didn't mean triple X. It was very different. It's kind of like a real hard NC-17. By yeah. Standard. They went a lot they into... X-rated, but not, it was not triple X. Here's something that I didn't really... Or maybe I did know this and I forgot about it. But basically, the X rating 
It wasn't like an official thing. It just means they couldn't rate it. It wasn't rated. Yeah. So they put the X on. They're it. like, well, the, yeah. They said that's yeah. why porn movies yeah. could, and any movie you could slap an X on it. Yeah. It didn't have it to be unrated. It didn't have to go through. Yeah. Uh, the MPAA or whatever to get that rating, you could just put it on an X. But they're like, that's why porn movies started saying there were triple X now because X started to like lose all the meaning. It didn't, yeah. And particularly X after shit. Midnight Cowboy won an Oscar because yeah, yeah, that was that, rated that was X. X. But you, you you see that today and it's it's not a big deal at all. Yeah, it's like oh, a male gigolo, we can't have that. Yeah. And I think, like I said, there was some male nudity in it. And yeah. it was really weird. They talked to Amy Heckerling, who directed uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, and she that would have been X back then. Probably, but she thought it was yeah. very funny that they didn't have a problem, obviously, showing female nudity. Je- Jennifer yeah. Jason Lee was naked in it, and, uh, you know, and um, uh, Phoebe Cates was naked in it. They're like, but during this awkward sex scene between Jennifer yeah. Jason Lee and that other actor, they're like, they, they initially shot it where he was naked or you could kind of see part of it, and they're like, oh, no, no, no. We can, show, some, we can show the women naked, but not him. There was some shit in there that in the 70s they would have given that an X rating. Remember she walked in on him on the, in the bathroom while he was like, jerking, off, jerking yeah. off. They probably, probably would have given him an <laughs> Judge X Reynolds. just for that. They didn't show it, but they showed him, but they didn't show it. You knew what he was doing, but they didn't. it wasn't graphic. But I think they, Yeah, because Phoebe Kate's was, expression, you know, like yeah. when she walks in, she's like... Bleh. And then there was like some nudity, and then there were some sex scenes back in the 60s or 70s. That would have been an X rating. I like that. I think a lot of people still relate to that movie because she wanted to show because Amy Heckerling wanted to show that what what young sex was really like, like is really awkward and stilted and everything. Like it wasn't like they usually showed in the movies. She's like, that's why I liked that scene with Phoebe Cates, like popping her top off with her tits popping out. And then a couple minutes later. She walks in on Judge Reinhold jerking off in the bathroom because she's like just to show the difference between like the reality and the fantasy or whatever. Um, so yeah, they, they really did go a lot into, like I said, the rating system they had, uh, they talked about Marilyn Monroe and how her, how previous to that, her being in Playboy, it was kind of like, if you showed up naked in a movie or something, it was really scandalous. And, but that, you know, her doing that in Playboy and it didn't mess up her career or anything that was kind of like open the floodgates. They talked to Mamie Van Doren, who... I had seen some movies with her in it because she was in a couple of movies that were on Mystery Science Theater, like Girls Town and stuff. And I knew that she'd done some nude scenes, but they showed one movie that she was in and I couldn't remember what it was. And I was like, holy crap. It was, I mean, she's naked and she's rolling around on the bed going, hey, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, holy crap. I didn't know it was that nude of a scene. But yeah, there you go. Mango's was talking about how awesome Oliver Reed was in The Brood. That, yeah, that, you, you, that's, yeah. That's really where, I think that was the first movie I ever saw with him in it when I was a kid. Yeah. And that character fucking scared me. I was like, whoa. Yeah, then, he's a then, scary person. Yeah, he scared me. <laughs> and then... I saw. I also saw uh, Burnt Offerings. Yeah. But I think I saw that after, after I, I saw The Brood. But I, you know, Oliver Reed, Oliver Reed intimidated me when I was a little kid. Like I said before, he, him and and fucking Michael Caine. Michael Caine. Uh, it's like they were gonna hit you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, they might. Yeah, like they were gonna fucking hit you at any moment. <laughs> Here I come. <laughs> slap the shit out of you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that motherfucker's going to slap the shit out of me. Like, it's just the way it was. I can see that. They they do yeah. definitely have that uh, intimidating, gonna going to smack you yeah. energy going yeah. on. The first time I ever saw Michael Caine kind of make, play a, a good guy was in The Island. Yeah. And I was still kind of spooked about him when I was watching The Island back when it you came out. You kept suspecting that he was going to turn out to be a turn villain. Be a villain, you know? Because... <laughs> My impression of him came from the hand. Yeah. He was a good guy in Jaws 4, I think, yeah. wasn't he? I don't, know. I don't know. It's been a long time since. I think I saw that fucking movie. The he played an assassin in some British movie. He was uh, in a lot of British yeah, movies. Yeah, he played some assassin. Uh, they, said it, they said that that was a pretty well-known role for him when he was in... Uh, well, he was in... What was that movie called? Alfie? I don't know. Didn't they remake it with Jude Law? Somebody help me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have. But this was a good movie, though. You know, just to tell you the history of American film. Uh, it's how it's really really good. Some of the shit was. But the thing about it, though, and I think they balanced this really well, and it's pretty long. It's pretty comprehensive. I think it was like two hours and ten minutes or something. But it didn't seem like that long because it yeah. was like really interesting, and they got a lot of a lot of guests, a lot of people like to talk yeah. about 
all the nude scenes they had done and shit yeah. like that. But one of the things that I think they did really well was they balanced because they were talking about you know censorship and different mores and yeah. stuff, and they kind of went through the history. But they're also saying that even though you know the '60s and the '70s and everything were much more permissive. One kind of downside to that is that because it was so permissive, you were kind of expected to do it, whether yeah. you wanted to or not. And they're saying that really the whole thing that people got la later on, like in maybe starting in the 80s and 90s, where they would say in their contract, you know, this is the nudity I will do. This is what yeah. you're allowed to do. They're like, that was... Um, kind of an outgrowth of that just because it was so permissive back in the 60s and 70s that it was just getting abused you would just turn up on set and they'd be like yeah we'll get naked or you're yeah. fired so um i think uh i think the thing that tripped me out was watching it was that i didn't realize when they started the code back in the back in the 30s yeah it was odd the attitude of the of the people who who wanted that code it was mostly a Catholic thing. Like a Catholic I feel like thing. it started out as like a Catholic but watchdog type of group. But what was funny is that they, they, they treated the movie theater as kind of like, I guess, public. Open, pu you know, right. open to like the public. Right, like everybody could just like see Like everybody, it. including little kids, could go in there. They were, so they just, they wanted to control exactly what you saw, but they didn't think of a damn rating system which seems like the most you obvious think that thing would be the obvious thing they didn't just, really start doing that they, until the 70s yeah really. they went through the trouble really the trouble of trying to control the entire industry at once and saying the you can't and they had like yeah. a very specific right. list you can't do this you can't do, and it wasn't yeah. just nudity it was right. all kind of stuff they didn't they didn't for some reason they just didn't think of well why don't we just make it so some movies only adults can go to them right they didn't think of that. Uh, they wrote, we have to defend the children. Well, get the fucking children out of there. Yeah, it's like children shouldn't you, be watching you, it. You, you, th you, would think that, you would think that that would just be obvious. Yeah, but it didn't because what ends up happening if you do that is that every movie has to be safe for kids. And every, it's like you can't like yeah, just every, watch something that kids yeah. aren't allowed to watch every, now. That's stupid. Every movie is fucking G-rated. Yeah, it's like know? nobody wants that. Yeah. Nobody wants that. I don't know even what made them <laughs> think like that. Well, I don't know. I, I do feel like those kind of groups back then, they kind of had a thing where they just felt like they had the moral high ground so they could just like tell, you, tell everybody, everybody else what, what to do. <laughs> even if yeah. even people that weren't Catholics or didn't give a shit or... It's just you very, think somebody would have come up with this. It's very says, well, strange Oh, yeah, to you're me. right. We got to keep the kids out of certain movies. We'll put a rating on it. Yeah, I don't and have we'll a problem more, with that. And we'll make more money if on the R-rated and the, and the PG-rated. That way everybody can see what they want to see. And you can, you can, you would think that that would be a no-brainer. Yeah, because, I mean, obviously, I don't think kids should be watching porn or kids right. should be watching, you know, torture porn or, like, right. really, really violent horror movies Yeah, but that's not anything. what the audience, the audience but, wanted to see. Right. Semi nudity, and they wanted to see but adult if things. Adults want to see yeah. that, then shit, man. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. And like I said, as long as the people in the movies are okay with it. Yeah. Those I'm ribs not... are going to be out of the oven in a minute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we're making ribs and some yeah. taters. Got, got that's that's going to be early dinner. Yeah. Well, I guess only dinner because I'm not going to eat again later. Cooking but... things for three hours. Mmm. That sounds really good. But yeah, so this is, as I said, a thing. it's on Hulu, and I think somebody else said it was am on Amazon Prime as well. It's really, really good. I thought it was, like, really fascinating. And even though I knew some of the stuff, there was a lot of new material in there, or like, little factoids that I didn't know. So, yeah, if you're into the history of film or anything like that, then I definitely recommend checking it out. And uh, I guess it's Wednesday, so we will see you guys again on our next live stream, which is going to be on Saturday. And uh, so have a good rest of your day, everybody, and we'll see you guys in a couple of days. Bye.